Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of StarCraft Inc. Today's episode is between ATN Sake versus Millennium Die Star. Now, Sake is a Protoss in the bottom of Terminus Ray, and uh, Die Star here, he's, he's playing Terran. He's over in the 9 o'clock position. Now, today I was kidnapped by a mass murderer who threatened to kill myself and my family if I didn't collect for him six pounds of basil in seven hours so that took most of my day but I decided I'd hurry home and cast a game for you guys and this is the one I chose rated 8.5 on gosugamers.com 8.5 being out of 10 so hopefully this is a good match um, I don't actually follow either of these players one second <coughs> <laughs> yeah, Millennium Die Star I've seen play before. I think I saw him in a cl actually no, that was not him. Never mind. I've seen Millennium players play and they're all pretty freaking good. Um, and Sake I've never watched play despite the fact that I am a Protoss player. I tend to watch um, OGSMC and Huck, those players a little bit more. Um, but uh, I'm sure Sake is a very talented player indeed. Uh, but we're not going to focus too much on the players themselves. Let's focus on the strategies and just the play styles of these players in general. Because you don't know, you don't have to know who the players are to enjoy StarCraft or to play it. Um, I've seen actually a lot of really high level players who've never watched a cast, never watched a stream, nothing. They just kind of figured it out for themselves. And that makes me cry because despite all the time I put into StarCraft, I am fucking god awful at this game. Anyway, we are seeing a 15 Nexus. From Sake, a ballsy play, starting this game off with such an interesting... Oh my, I, I'm, I like the way this is going already. We are not going to see standard play in this match. Um, so, this is a long map. Like I said, this is Terminus Ray, a very long rush distance, and the 50 Nexus is something you can get away with. But if the Terran scouts it, which it looks like we're going to see Die Star get over here, there are a lot of ways he can choose to react. And uh, I'm a little bit worried for Sake. Um, we're going to see that same fast expand, not quite a 15 um, supply expand as the barracks did go down first. So uh, it is going to be a little bit later, but not too far behind, not to a point where he's unable to punish Sake for taking this expansion. Um, <coughs> we are going to see that gateway finish for Sake. And I really want to see how both players plan to follow this up. He, uh, opting to get just one gas. It looks like he's going to play this, um, following the Nexus, he's going to play this exact same way he would play it without the Nexus, you know? So we've got that pylon, followed by the second pylon with the gateway, the core, and the gas with the gateway. So, to, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. Any Protoss player watching this knows what I'm saying. And then transitioning into some gateways. Maybe a Robo after. I imagine a Robo is what's next. And f look at this. Lots and lots of gate uh, barracks here. It looks like Star might really want to punish the Protoss player for taking that fast expansion. And why not, right? Um, there's an SCV hiding here, which is going to be used for a late scout, I'm sure. A Zealot going to come up here and take the tower, which is a good choice. He will be able to see any kind of push as a probe is scouring the map over the top for whatever reason. Um, I'm not really sure what its purpose is. But that's what it's doing, and three Marines here to deny anything as simple as a probe scout. Um, but yeah, that's a lot of barracks real fast. And, uh, okay, I just got harassed simultaneously by everyone around me. Uh, that's the SSN clan for you. I think you are a person. Corinne thinks I'm a person. That's good. Anyway, so Millennium Die Star, like I said, pumping out those racks. Um, staying on top of his supply, both players doing that, um, and he's getting his first gas. He didn't have a gas until now, which I didn't notice, but that is the case. We are going to see just two gates for now, two gases from the Protoss player. Guys, what do you think about pizza? I really, I've, I've, been, I've been eating pizza a lot lately, and I'm not sure it's good for me. There's a lot of fat and grease on cheese, but I'm a skinny guy. I think I can get away with it. I drive too fast to worry about my cholesterol. Um, but really, I want to know what you guys think. How much pizza do you eat in a week? Is is it going to kill me if I eat like pizza every day? Sometimes twice a day? Because that's what happens here sometimes, I think, a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. A lot of Marines coming down for Die Star. And uh, guys, if I die, I promise I'll tell you guys first. 
get up that ramp. Oh, gonna lose that stalker. He needs to force field. No, he can't force field because this army is going right for the Nexus. And uh, stalkers, you know, they outrange the Marines. And with that late gas from Millennium Die Star, the, uh, the stalkers outrange those. Sorry, there's no. No, I just repeated myself. Without the gas from Millennium Die Star, he's actually got no stim. But those probes, man, they're gonna get mauled by the Marines. That uh, sentry going down, not microing the stalkers the way he needs to be. That stalker almost goes down. Thankfully, he gets out of there with four, two HP. And what is? I don't really like the micro that's going on from Sake. He could manage this much better. And uh, Jesus Christ, balls, Maloney. Uh, that did not go well for Sake at all, losing all the harvesters at his natural. And the Terran going to take advantage of his lead and grab a third. So this is going very well for Millennium Die Star. Very well indeed. You know, as I, just, as I say that name over and over again, I feel like I've cast one of his games before. But I've cast so many games, I don't freaking know. So we actually just watched him adjust the positioning of his bunker um, just a little bit. Like, two squares over. And I don't know. Like, I'm not a Terran player. I don't... I don't really know what the difference would have been there, uh, but uh, there must have been an important one. At any rate, two stalkers coming in here to see what's going on. I don't know if he saw those marauders or not. <laughs> that was a yawn. He, I don't know if he saw those marauders. Anyway, long story short, um, I can actually take a look at the income tab. Ooh, somehow the Protoss actually isn't too far behind in Harvesters. In fact, he's ahead in Harvesters, but miles behind in actual income due to mules. That's all I got to say about that. So despite being Harvesters ahead, he's actually behind in income. Um, he is ahead in gas, though. Keep that in mind. Mules do not give you gas. Um, the one thing mules do allow you to do, though, is oversaturate. When you are oversaturated on your base... Mules don't count. They can stack and you can oversaturate and actually make more income than anybody on the same amount of bases that is, as you. So, that sucks for everybody trying to kill a pro to, uh, Terran player. But, what do you do? You, man, you just gotta deal with it, man. Don't complain about imbalance. Just find a way around it, right? Um, easier said than done for some people, but it is doable. We have seen a lot of Protoss players do a lot of amazing things. OGSMC winning two GSLs single-handedly. Hawk just winning DreamHack. And uh, there was actually a Protoss player in first place in the Grandmaster League for a while, but uh, I think the, uh, not the Maga, uh, the Muslim just took that from him a couple days ago. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how Protoss fares in the next season. Um, but so far, you know, not terrible, not terrible. We got a lot of Protoss poking their heads out, but Zerg, man, Zerg just won a GSL, no, MLG, MLG, I think, undefeated. That would be um, Ness T, man. That guy is taking names. And, well, not even taking names. He just fucking kills. You know, he doesn't care who you are. Do you have a face? I'm going to cut it off and eat it. I think that's Ness T's motto. If I can remove it from your body, I will put it in my mouth. Anyway, <laughs> there's a lot of parts I don't want him to put in my mouth. Oh, God. I, just, I don't know why I talk sometimes. I say the weirdest shit. But it's okay. Because we're watching StarCraft and you don't necessarily... Ha you can hit that mute button and you see all the same things on the screen. It works out, right? The you know, production tab is not open, but it is now. And, uh, you know, you can just turn me off at any time. But we will, you know, continue the game. I will continue to talk. It's you, to, you know, stab me in the throat and stop me from talking. We are supply blocked! How did that happen? I don't agree with this. Shenanigans. I call imbalance. Pylons are broken, I think. Anyway, we're building two more pylons to get rid of that supply block, overcompensating for what he's done to himself. There are dropships floating around, and I don't like it because I think it's going to be bad news for Sake if he doesn't catch those. Um, but we are seeing weapons upgrades for the Terran player, and in response, getting armor. No, he got weapons. Why did he get weapons? A lot of the time, Protoss players opt to get armor against um, Terran infantry. And uh, the Protoss player in this game did not do that. There's a lot of freaking infantry here for the Terran player. And it's not the kind of thing that uh, this Protoss player wants to go up against with his low army count. And, oh, actually, he's a lot in his main. I forgot about that. He's got a bunch of stalkers here. But Marauders manhandle stalkers. It's not what he wants to have right now. Psystorm coming out. That is, in fact, what he wants to have right now. But Mobius Reactor um, coming out for the ghosts. That's what that does, right? I'm not silly. Um, but no ghosts in production. 
Movies reactor. That's for the ghosts, right? I want to say that's for ghosts and not for ravens. The raven ravens is like a re uh, different reactor. But yeah, there we go. There's the ghosts. Okay, I was worried for a second, but we are seeing ghosts. Um, and we are seeing lots of medevacs and some Vikings. Uh, Vikings probably just in case we see any observers. Um, and just in case Colossus come out. So if he spots that observer in the air with a scan, the uh, the Vikings will automatically snipe it because they have nothing else to shoot at. Also, I don't know if you know this, but look at this damage. So we've got um, two attacks. They do ten damage. Uh, well, I'll talk about this later. But uh, Vikings actually do a lot of damage when they're on the ground. I don't know if you knew that. Actually, there will not be an engagement, so I might be able to talk about it now. Let's see what's going on. No, both players just kind of dancing around. So I can't actually see the ground attack right now. No, we're just looking at air. If it lands, I'll, I'll show you the uh, the land damage. But it's freaking insane. It's more than a stalker. Like, without... Ah, it's just freaking scary. Anyway, this is a huge army that kind of came out of nowhere. It was so tiny of a second ago. He needs to split himself up. He needs to spread out or a ghost will take advantage of that with EMP. There we go. He split up using that guardian shield before the EMP can go down. A pylon being slaughtered, so no more reinforcements in this area. And we did see a storm go down. Beautiful force fields. Wow, what uh, Sake has failed in micro, uh, macro. He has made up for in micro, but it's not enough. It looks like he is being destroyed by the Terran player. Those medevacs more than paying for themselves. And anything that tries to run away is instantly slowed down and destroyed. There's no escape for the Protoss ball. And no, Stalkers are not a good choice against this army composition as they will not be able to get away at all. They do have Blink, so that will help, but Stim will make them catch up. And with those medevacs, oh, there we go. Reinforcing down. The storm goes down. That storm was incredible. The second storm finishing everything off. There's a few straggling Terran units here in the mid-ground. The Stalkers blinking forward to deal with them the best they can. Zell's being warped in, but not utilized. A little bit wasteful by Sake. And, uh, wow, Sake really making the most of that second wave. He is taking his fourth here. As we can see, fully saturated at his second, not his third. Amora, the Terra player, trying to take an expo, not paying attention and going to lose his command center. I think he forgot about it. No point in turning it around now. There's no way he's saving it. Terra player trying to flank. We do have Archons here. Zealots in charge, going to come in. Archons not getting any shots off as his units are not close enough together. But what can you do? You can't bunch the units up and you will get EMP'd. Oh, Stim Marauders are doing so much damage and the Protoss player can't even really get in close to shoot at them. So basically just losing Zealots, giving free, free Zealots to the Terran player basically. Um, do we have any ghosts in this mix? I do not see any ghosts in that mix. No. Three more ghosts in production. Three more Marauders in production. There must be a lot of barracks here for the Terran player. Um, <laughs> I was correct. Look at that. There are... We are seeing... Eight, nine, ten. Yeah, 10. 10 barracks. That's a lot of barracks. And there are more in the other bases, right? Um, trying to take a third, a fourth again. Um, there's the uh, 11th barracks. So, 11 barracks, as far as I can tell. And uh, these Templar, good decision. Making them hang back just to gain energy so that later, with your next warp in, you've got those there as reinforcements. The Protoss player pushing forward with one Immortal in the mix, which is a good choice. I like that. That ghost actually never EMP'd anything before it died, which is strange to me. Um, and here we go. Scan going down so he knows exactly where the army is. The army is in a perfect little ball. EMPs will vaporize that army. Oh my god, that is painful to see. He needs to pull back. He needs to regenerate his shields. Going back to the Templar, who uh, are completely unaffected by that uh, EMP because they were so far back. And now this base kicking in for the Protoss player. He's going to get full use of that, not using his chrono on it effectively, but taking a fifth. Yes, fifth base. That is what I see. And uh, there's four, five, six. Six ghosts in that army. Let's see, let's see. Am I counting right? Yes, yeah, six ghosts. And uh, no more in production. So if the Protoss player can skull fuck that army, he's eliminated quite a bit of the... Uh, EMPing threat, which is really the biggest problem right now. Um, what happened there? I don't even know what died. I just see stalker parts, but uh, okay. Okay, there's a big concave here. There are a lot of freaking Terran units, and it's going to be difficult for the Protoss player to engage as the reinforcements are coming from the wrong angle. The 
Protoss Flyer needs to get over here or he will lose his fourth base. And he needs to get over there fast. I think it's already too late. The scan goes down to actually preemptively see where the Protoss player is coming from. And now, look at all the ghosts getting ahead of themselves. Wow, feedback going down on all the ghosts. But almost the entire army is already EMP'd. He cannot engage this. He might have to sacrifice. Storm going down. I don't know where that storm came from. I thought everything got EMP'd. You can see in the health bars that almost everything that has been EMP'd previously. Oh, there's a free Templar here for the kill. Storm going down on part of the Terran army. This army is going to kite the Protoss backwards. Protoss needs to engage better, although it will be able to clean this up. Blinking forward to do the last bit of damage and finish off every Marauder in the army. And uh, there is another army sitting here for the Terran trying to defend this Expo, but I think the Expo can be destroyed by the Terran, the Protoss player. However, this is Marauder versus Stalker, and it's not the engagement you want. He already blinked forward, so he cannot blink away. Now re-meeting with his Zealot friends and his Immortal and his uh, Archon Storm going down, which is exactly what he needs. It looks like he might have enough to clean up the Terran army here. This is going to be trying to morph into a PF, but he's not going to get it up in time. Storming over here to keep the army from assisting the PF, which is brilliant play. And uh, it looks like this Protoss force might get cleaned up. Maybe, I don't know. No, it looks like it might be enough to kill the Terran army. SCVs trying to do what they can. And, uh, wow. Wow, not how I thought that fight was going to go, but it did, in fact, go into Protoss' favor. EMP going down on those Stalkers. It looked like it got all of them, but only three of them actually took shield damage, so that was weird. And, uh, scanning all over the place. Star seeing what's up, and GG's. So, Sake taking this game. All the observers leave. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I most certainly did. And, uh, I'm Mrs. Sen Incarna. You're watching StarCraft. Thank you. Have a good night.